Simon quietly crept into his parents' bedroom as they sat at the dinner table. Thoughts raced through his mind as he searched for his father's wallet hidden in the closet. Oh, here you are. Simon whispered as he reached for the brown wallet. Hey, Simon. What are you doing here? His father, Jack, asked, causing Simon to freeze in his tracks. Dad, I was just, Simon began to explain. Looking for money, right? Jack interrupted. Your mom and I already know that you've been taking money from my closet. No, Dad, it's not like that, Simon protested. Stop lying, son. I know you've been spending money on video games and hanging out with your friends. I never expected this from you, Jack scolded him. Simon closed his father's closet, his heart pounding. How did he find out? Simon had indeed been taking money from his father's closet and spending it frivolously, but he couldn't bring himself to admit his mistake. He stood near the bed and forced a smile. You're grounded. Jack yelled as soon as Simon returned home from school. You won't leave the house until I say so. Dad, you've got it all wrong, Simon lied. I was taking the money because one of my classmates got injured and his family can't afford his surgery. I was trying to help. Oh, really? Jack inquired. What's the boy's name? It's Adam, Simon fabricated. You know, the short kid who lives a few blocks away. Simon felt relieved when his father nodded, seemingly believing his lies. Little did he know that Jack would visit Adam's house the next day. The following day, Jack introduced himself to Adam's mother at her doorstep. Hi, I'm Jack, Simon's father. Is Adam home? No, Jack, Adam's mother smiled. He's at school. Why would he be home? Jack's forehead furrowed. Simon told me that Adam needed surgery after an injury. I thought he must be at home. What surgery? My son is perfectly fine, Adam's mother replied. Oh, okay. I must have misunderstood. Sorry about that. Have a nice day. Jack said before heading back home, fuming with anger after realizing his son had lied to him the previous night. You're grounded. Jack yelled again as soon as Simon returned home from school. You won't leave the house until I say so. Without uttering a word, Simon rushed up the stairs and slammed his bedroom door behind him. He was infuriated that his father had uncovered the truth and that he couldn't hang out with his friends anymore. Instead of reflecting on his actions, Simon decided to teach Adam a lesson. The following day, after most students had left the classroom, Simon began bullying Adam. What are you doing? Adam shouted, but Simon remained silent. You want these, don't you? Simon picked up Adam's glasses from his desk. Go get them, Simon said, tossing the glasses over a high windowsill that was out of reach for most students. How will you reach up there, shorty? Simon taunted Adam, who struggled to climb onto a table to reach the windowsill. Suddenly, Adam lost his balance and fell to the floor. An ambulance soon arrived to take Adam to the hospital, while Simon watched his classmate in shock. Several days later, after Simon's house arrest was lifted, he returned home one morning after spending the entire night outside. As he removed his shoes and hung his coat, his father asked, where have you been? Simon felt his cheeks flush with embarrassment. Although he was no longer grounded, his parents had explicitly told him not to stay out all night or attend parties. However, this time, there was a valid reason for his absence. Dad, I've been working at a grocery store, Simon confessed. I wanted to tell you about my new part-time job. What nonsense! Jack exclaimed. I know you just came back from a party. No, Dad, Simon locked eyes with his father. I was at work. I started this job because I wanted to save money for Adam. He got hurt in the classroom because of me two weeks ago, and I just want to make it right. Jack chuckled upon hearing his son's explanation, believing that Simon was once again weaving a tale. 
Do you think I'll buy into your story again? Never, Jack declared. Believe me, Dad. You can call Adam's mother to check if I'm lying, Simon responded before recounting the events at school from the other day. A few hours later, Jack phoned Adam's mother and discovered that her son had indeed fallen at school, but she assured him that it wasn't Simon's fault. Instead, she explained that her son had slipped and landed on the floor. After hanging up, Jack summoned Simon into his room. Yes, Dad? Simon inquired. You've lied to me again, Simon, but this time, I won't ground you, Jack said firmly. Pack your bags, because I'm taking you to your grandfather's farm. You'll stay there without your phone, video games, and laptop. But, Dad. Simon started. I don't want to hear any excuses, Simon. Pack your bags. Now. Jack raised his voice. Feeling dejected, Simon returned to his room and began stuffing his clothes into a bag. Although he felt disheartened by his father's lack of trust, he was relieved that Adam hadn't divulged the incident at school to his mother. He knew his father would have been furious if he had learned that Simon had thrown Adam's glasses over the windowsill. Over the next few days, Simon worked diligently at his grandfather's farm, assisting with various chores. Since Jack had explained to Simon's grandfather the reason for his stay, the elderly men ensured he maintained a strict routine for the teenager. However, he was pleasantly surprised to witness Simon's strong work ethic. It warms my heart to see you work so hard, Simon, Richard, Simon's grandfather, remarked. Finally, you found something besides video games that piques your interest. Simon grinned at Richard, thanked him for acknowledging his efforts, and then confided in him about Adam's situation and his part-time job at the grocery store to help with Adam's surgery costs. Oh, dear, Richard said sympathetically. That's quite unfortunate. But fret not, I'll assist you. The following day, Richard called Simon into his room and revealed that he had spoken with neighboring farm owners, three of whom agreed to pay Simon for tending to their crops and working on their farms throughout the summer. Oh, that's a fantastic opportunity, Grandpa!" Simon exclaimed. While he initially thought Richard would assist him financially, he readily agreed to work on the farms and save money for Adam. After two months of hard work, Simon was thrilled to receive money from the neighboring farm owners. He expressed his gratitude to Richard before leaving the farm with Jack. Wait a moment, young man, Richard said. I have something for you. Simon's grandfather retrieved an envelope from his wooden cupboard and handed it to him. Here's your reward, Simon. You've learned the true meaning of responsibility, and I'm proud of you for earning money through hard work. Thank you so much, Grandpa. Simon hugged Richard, feeling genuinely happy about the money his grandfather had given him. After leaving the farm with Jack, Simon visited Adam's house to contribute the funds required for his surgery. Inside, he found Adam struggling to move in a wheelchair. Hi, Simon, Adam greeted him. Adam, I'm truly sorry for what happened that day at school, Simon said as he sat beside Adam. Thank you for not telling your parents about it. Oh, I didn't fall because of you. I just slipped, Adam replied with a smile. Simon apologized to Adam and then handed an envelope filled with money to Adam's mother. I saved this money for Adam's surgery. I believe it should cover the expenses, Simon explained. But why? Adam's mother inquired. As my father mentioned earlier, Adam got injured because of me that day. I've been feeling extremely guilty ever since. This is my way of alleviating that guilt. Please accept it, Simon said, trying to hold back tears. Soon, Adam underwent surgery and embarked on the path to recovery. During this time, Simon frequently visited him and the two boys ultimately forged a deep friendship.